today, Dr. Shada will be finishing her presentation from Thursday and then starting on the presentation that was scheduled for today. So we're really excited to have her again. And I'm going to pass over the microphone to her. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. So it should, it should say concepts of 3D planning. And I do remember we had a lot of questions last time on Thursday. And uh, some of them were written down by Sarah, Sarah Ashmig. I, I don't see her among the, the group yet. But if anyone has any questions that they want me to answer before I proceed from the previous presentation, please do let me know. We have covered the concept of GTV, CTV, PTV. We have talked about the prescription point, the normalization point, and we gave examples of you know, what to do and absolutely what to avoid and what not to do. Um, we also discussed about using percentage isodose lines versus absolute dose lines. We had really good interaction, a very interactive session. I, I was really happy on Thursday. So if, and, and Tia, the way that I like things to go because some people would want me to stop and explain things in Arabic. So please keep an eye on the chat. And if you think that, you know, someone said, you know, please stop. And we have also Dr. Suha with us. So if someone is writing in Arabic, please Dr. Suha, you know, uh, please stop me anytime. I can always go back, explain, and I will take questions. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Thank you. And my big speed, for some reason, started to work. Okay, so continuing from Thursday. So now we're looking at the concept of plan evaluation, and I'm going to start with the um, uh, maximum dose, minimum dose, mean dose, and the dose volume histogram, the DVH. And first of all, we have to appreciate that we always have dose in homogeneity in the plan, meaning you should never expect to have beautiful 100% coverage for all the PTV with no cold area or hot area. So some inhomogeneity is expected in 3D CRT, but that inhomogeneity is minimal, meaning the plus and minus from the prescription dose is not too much. Now, when we talk about maximum dose in tumor, for 3D CRT, it is preferred to be, you know, up to 107% of the max dose. So you would have some hotspots over here and there, but they shouldn't be 115 or 120 or 125 right? They should be reasonable. Reasonable could depend from one school of thought to the other. Someone might only want 105% maximum dose, and I've seen physicians who only stick to their gun and say, I'm not accepting more than 105. And other physicians would go up to 110%. So there is no particular recommendation, but it should be preferred to be kept as low as possible. 107% seems to be something that everyone would agree on. Now, as of where this hotspot should be, right? It's preferred to be in the tumor. And you could think, well, this is given. Not really, because when I say tumor, I mean either the CTV or the GTV. Excuse me, wait. I'm going to go to... So tumor by definition is, is CTV or GTV. It is not the PTV. So if you have this ball of, of GTV and you have an expansion of seven millimeter around it to create your PTV, if you have to have a hotspot, it's better to be inside your GTV, not in the PTV. And the reason is PTV is normal tissue. Remember, PTV is an expansion into normal healthy tissue that we unfortunately have to do to account for internal and external motion of the target. So any hotspots may be 105%, 107%, it's better to be inside the GTV volume and try to keep the PTV within the prescription dose volume. And of course it goes without saying that you should not have anything more than 100% of your prescription in normal tissue outside the PTV. Now, what about the minimum dose? Where should it go? Well, again, minimum dose is the opposite of maximum dose. If I'm going to have minimum dose, say 95% of the prescription or 90% of the prescription, then that should be in the PTV, right? In other words, if I am compromising a little bit from prescription dose, 
that should be in the PTV. And there's a reason why sometimes you compromise and we'll come to that later on. This is important, so I have to say this um, again in Arabic. إذا ولا بد يفضل دائما أنها تكون في البي تي في وليس في ال في الجي تي في تمام؟ Now sometimes this minimum dose is intentional because you want to prioritize organ at risk coverage over P T V coverage. So you say, okay, from this side, I'm going to have a little bit of P T V lower lower dose of the P T V because there is an organ at risk here. So you're you know you're intentionally doing that. And sometimes the lower doses of the PTV uh, comes from the location of the tumor, let's say in the lung. So the lung is low density tissue, and hence you have a little bit of less coverage in the peripheral sides. Of course, you can always increase the coverage, and we'll come to that in the next session, hopefully in the, you know, in the next one hour or so, or less than one hour. Now, when it comes to dose volume histogram, it can give you some of the information, but not all of the information. And some of this uh, information, for example, look at the PTV. PTV is this blue line, right? And the GTV is this red line. Now I can get at least three information from this. I can tell you that there is an, a volume of the PTV that is getting more dose than the GTV. And this immediately tells you that your hotspot is in the PTV and not in the GTV. So it's important, look at the shape of your curve. If you see a tail in the PTV, it's, it's extending beyond the GTV. GTV is the red line. This means that the hotspot the 20 gray, for example, 20, 19, you know, 19 and a half is in the PTV. And PTV, as we said, it's normal healthy tissue. So if I want to have um, any extra dose, it's better be in the GTV, which is the red line. I see someone raise their hands. Oh, I can take a question now. <clears throat> Shima, do, do you have a question? Ah, she she uh, said for you to say that again, please. Of course. طيب الآن look at the curve of GTV and PTV تمام the red one هذا ال GTV okay and the dark blue or whatever this color is this is the PTV and you can see that the PTV has a tail في الدنب that extends all the way to twenty gray it means there is a hot spot or hot area inside the PTV that goes up to 20 gray. But look at the GTV. The GTV, the tumor nafso, the, the, the tumor itself has a dose that ends here at 19 gray. So what this tells you, looking at the DVH alone, this tells you first thing, we have high dose in the PTV but it is not in the GTV. Yeah, dose that is higher than prescription, it is not in the tumor. Just looking at the shape. Okay, is this clear? Now, when I look at this and I see that the PTV has a higher dose tail, well, GTV does not have this higher dose tail, immediately in my mind that this is not a good quality plan. And how do we make it better quality? That we have to push this hot dose to be inside the GTV. In other words, if I have to have a tail, it should be in the GTV. تمام يعني الدوز higher than prescription يفضل تكون في tumor. So this is one thing I can infer from this plan without looking at the isodose coverage. The other thing I can look, I can infer is look at this part of the of the PGV. You can see this is colder than prescription. And instead of having the prescription being here, Lihia, about 19 gray, I have it less than 19 gray. It's about around, you know, a little bit less than 18 gray. So I can know there's part of the PTV that is getting less than the prescription dose and part of the GTV that's getting, a PTV getting more than prescription dose. Tamam? But those are the two things that I can read right now. One thing that I do not 
get from the DVH? The following question is, is this a contiguous area? Is this cold area concentrated in, in one part of the PTV? Or is it, you know, kind of scattered everywhere, like a little bit of pocket here, pocket here, and pocket here? Similar for this high dose region, is it all concentrated in one area or is it distributed like small, small hot pockets here and there? That you do not know. This you have to go to the isodose distribution and you have to look at it slide by slide. Any questions on this concept yet? Okay. So yes, what Shreda, I, want... uh, I have just one, one comment. Go ahead, Dr. Uh, yeah. And uh, هقوله بالعكس وده لوجيك هي دي الدوز اللي احنا عاوزين ندليفر تو ذا تارجت تيومر اتسلف البي تي في ده منطقه افتراضيه قد ما هي معنيه بالسيت اب نفسه لكن عاوزاكم تخي معدي فيه نورمال تيشو نفسه مثلا زي البروستات ماشي جواها اليوريثرا انا اشتغلت على الكلام ده في يو سي اس اف وكان البلان الكويس ان احنا النورمال تيشو اللي معدي وخلي بالي جدا انه منطقه الهوت سبوت اللي انا بخليها جوه الجي تي في كونستركشن وبيجيب لي جريد 3 يو تي مشاكل وحاجات كتير فانا بس عاوزاكم والكلام ده ابلايد على على تيومرز كتير برضو لما اشتغلت على كرينيو فارينجيوما انا جنبي البيتريتري جلاند فانا عاوزاكم الكلام ده هايل في التطبيق بس لو انا عندي نورمال تيشو جوه التارجت نفسه فانا هرسمه في الدوز ديستريبيوشن بتاعته ولو في هوت بره الجزء ده ده بس كان كومنت دكتوره شادة عشان دكتوره اي ريلي ابريشيت الكلينيكال انبوت انتو ذس البلاننج سيستم اند ذس از فور ايفري ون عفوا البلاننج ميثودولوجي از ريلي اي ان سم اي وود لايك تو سي اتس ا دانس بين ذا فيزيسست اور ذا بلانر اند ذا ريديشن اونكولوجيست بيكوز As physicists, we think of technicalities, we think of machine limitation, we think of all these yes. things, but we don't have in, in, um, in the human or in patient concept of it. Yes. But yes, but it's, it, it really is a back and forth between radiation oncologist and the, and the planner. It has to, it's, yeah. it's a nice dance, I would say. And yeah. the good thing, <laughs> if you have two good dancing partners, if you can understand what your physician likes to have and if the physician knows you know, how the uh, physicist does the planning. بيكون هاي الموضوع. Okay, so Thank now... Uh, Shadow, we have one more question. One of our participants is asking, can you use D minus DVH? What's D minus DVH? I'm, I'm not totally sure. Can, Mohammed, can you clarify your question? Uh, the differential of DVH. Yes, so I have not personally used a differential DVH, and I find it, personally speaking, I find it difficult to read and to interpret. However, this is easier to understand, and it's easier to translate into the, those uh, objectives we have in the literature. So if you open the literature, you'd, you'd, you'd see, for example, dose to 30% of lung should not exceed you know, a, a, certain, uh, a certain limit or a certain number. So it's easier to read on this figure. Yes, of course, you can use a differential DVH, but I personally do not have experience on it, so I cannot give you much into that. If someone else have experience in it, on it, you know, you can, that person can teach all of us. Uh, unfortunately, I don't. And now we want to go to the concept of mean dose, and that is not well used or well understood. El mean dose, as we all know, it's the average, but it, it's the weighted average, meaning, tamam? And in order to explain this concept, uh, let's have this example. So a physician prescribes 50 gray to PTV, and then you have the following two plans to give to the physician. Plan one has minimum dose of 35 gray, mean dose of 52 gray, and plan two has the minimum dose of 45 gray and mean dose of 48 gray. Both have the same maximum dose so that we don't have to worry about maximum dose. And the question is, they all look similar. Isodose distribution is more or less also similar, more or less again. And the DVH shows, you know, slighter differences when you look at the DVH and you read the DVH data. 
And then the question becomes, so which plan should I choose? One person might say, well, this plan has minimum dose of 45 gray, and this plan has minimum dose of 35 gray, so I'll choose plan two. It makes sense, right? Plan two has 10 gray higher in minimum, minimum dose. And remember, my prescription is 50 gray. But then we come here and we see, well, this one has mean dose of 52, and this one has mean dose of 48. So what does that mean? OK, so everyone pay attention. Um, I'm going to. This 35 gray dose, yes, it's very low. It is about 15 gray lower than prescription, but is not affecting the overall dose in the tumor. Why? It could be because I have one, two, or three voxels with this very low dose. And so when you do the weighted average, you know, three voxels of this very low dose does not have much effect on the overall distribution. And as you can see, the mean dose inside the PTV is 52 gray. It's actually high. So this tells me that the PTV tends to be more in the hotter part. يعني التوزيع الإشعاعي داخل ال PTV يحتوي فقط يمكن فوكسل أو تنتين أو ثلاثة من ال cold dose من ال small dose ومعظم التوزيع باتجاه ال prescription dose أو أو higher right now let's look at plan two. Plan two has minimum dose of 45 gray. But because the mean dose is 48, this tells me that I have so many voxels. Adad Kabir are geared towards the, the cold area, 45 gray. And hence, the average dose or the mean dose is really lower, 48 gray as opposed to 50 gray. Tamam? Fabilhala ula, plan one. Minimum dose is not affecting the overall coverage. And actually, the, the mean coverage is very high. So this means that, mathematically speaking, of course, I'm a you know, physicist looks at number. Mathematically speaking, it says very low number of doses of, of voxels have this dose. However, even if this one is higher in number, but so many of, of, of the voxels, a lot of the voxels are lower than prescription, and hence they are affecting the overall coverage. And this is just the same thing, you know, I said, I, I want to say it verbally before I put it on the slide so that people understand. Is this really understood? So in this case, I would tell the physician, I would choose uh, a plan one. So this would be the plan, I'm trying to make a start, it's not working, so I'll choose plan one. Now, remember that you cannot just make a decision on which plan to choose based on just numbers from the DVH. You really have to go back and look at the isodose coverage one slide after the other. And if you pay more attention, if you have you know, good memory and you can put 3D information in your mind, you will probably notice that some of the isodose lines uh, are colder in plan two. Yes? Someone wanted to say something? Okay. All right, one more information that we can get from the DVH. Sometimes you're, if you pay attention to all those numbers that you have, you find something called sampling coverage. The actual name could be, is, is uh, TPS dependent. Do you have Pinnacle? Do you have Oncentra? Do you have Eclipse? Do you have Monaco? But you would see something like this, sampling coverage. And it should always be 100%. If it is not, maybe it could be 90% or maybe it could be 95 or 80, and your planning system will give you some sort of, not warning, like an exclamation mark or maybe a yellow triangle. This means that the calculation grid is not covering that entire volume. So whatever this volume is, let's say this volume is lung, for example. And then it, this is showing me 90% cover, 90% under here sample coverage. It means that 90% of the lung is being covered by the calculation grid, but I have 10% of this volume not being covered. So you, the question is now, so how is this affecting my DVH? Well, if you're using, if you're using 
percentage volume, then this will give you wrong, wrong information because it's only sampling. Oh, sorry. For sure. Sampling coverage, tamam. جهاز لجهاز حسب جهاز التخطيط اللي عندك. لكن هو يقول لك كم بكون عندك هنا مجموعة أعضاء. ال calculation grid أو إذا أنت عايزة طبعاً we have female فيز. إذا أنتوا عايزين معلومات صحيحة في الدي في اتش لازم تضمنوا إنه جهاز التخطيط يحسب داخل ال calculation grid كيف أضمن؟ أو إلقاء نظرة على هذا على sampling coverage. لازم تشوفوا انه احنا ممكن ندرسه تمام؟ في جزء من اللنج خارج الكالكوليشن. Is this clear? So what you want to see is 100% of your organs are being covered by the calculation grid. This is what it means. Oops, excuse me. Now another excuse thing. me, ma'am. ايوه yes. في في خربشه بالصوت. Can you ask again? معلش. This organ or not? جهاز التخطيط تكبر ال calculation grid. بس أي شيء ضمن ضمن ال 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 calculation grid راح يح مفهومة ولا عايز مش عارفة مفهوم؟ لا لو volume أقدر أشوفه على D B H. الحساب صورة ال C T. وبالتالي uh, you will spend a lot of time to do one single plan. If you make it big enough to include all your CT scan, you can do that, but then the planning system will take very long time to do the calculation. If you make it very small, just around the PTV, of course you will have very quick time for planning, but then again, you're not really having the information for the surrounding organs. So you want it to be big enough to include all, all the organs at risk. يعني كل شيء رسمه الطبيب أو الطبيبة طبعاً كل شيء رسمه ال radiation oncologist have to be included in this grid. كويس have to be included يعني هو ب ب mark مثلاً نأخذ الحالة اللي هي الأكبر craniospinal radiation. أنا رسمت التارجت ال PTV وعندي plenty plenty of organ at rest عندي lung عندي thyroid عندي brain optic nerve يبقى من حسبة ال calculation ويطلع لي على ال DVH وأقدر أحدد ال قد إيه volume خد قد إيه دوز مية بالمية صحيح and uh, وهذه مسألة الفيزيائي so so you have to know the physicists have to know the technical issues of their planning system so when you see something that doesn't look, يعني, uh, you know, something not normal, or you have mm. some sort of exclam exclamation mark, you should be able to mm. know what this is. Because. Sorry, أنا هقول comment تاني. إحنا إزاي نختار a CT uh, protocol نفسه جدا مصري خالص ما نقطش في critical order uh, ال uh, ال mic. Okay, thank you. أنا لازم أخذ volume CT cut. من الاول داخل في التارجت بتاعي وكمان الفوليوم بتاعت النورمال تيشو عشان تبان ب 100% فوليوم على الدي في اتش ما يبقاش مقطوش فيها زي ما دكتوره سارة بتقول لانه انا هحتاج ان انا ايفالويت اللانج 100% الفوليوم بتاعها كله انا عاوزاه فحتى لو التارجت في جزء مثلا في الميدياستاين فوق انا لا ادوس تو ذا كريتيكال وقت قد ايه ده 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 مهم جدا في البروتوكول بتاع السي تي بي نفسه ما بقاش انا قاطعه تمام انا ممكن ميبي جو باك اند توك اباوت ذس ليتر ذس از ان امبورتنت كونسيبت يعني كونسيبت تو ال ال بيبل هو ار جاست ستارتنج هلا سمون كولد حلا اوكي سو ناو هاو دو اي ريد ذس هاو دو يو ريد ا بوينت اون ذا دي في اتش تمام سو ليتس سي وي هاف ا بوينت ذات از انترسكتنج this part of the grid, I have 20% here from the volume side, and I have 10 gray over here. Remember, by the way, what I said last lecture, last Thursday. It is highly recommended that you use absolute dose instead of percent dose, because percent dose is misleading. It is percentage of what? Is it percentage of prescription dose? Is it percentage of normalization dose? or is it percentage of the maximum dose in the distribution? 
So percentage dose is always misleading. And if you don't know, it is referring to what? And in Nisbal Mi'awiyah, when I say 80%, I say 80% of min shu, 80% min prescription, will 80% min normalization, will 80% min al isocenter, will 80% min DMAX. And I showed you last Thursday that having the same prescription point but different normalization point, you can have completely different distribution in your plan. Tamam? So it's highly recommended to, to remove any ambiguity to use absolute dose. absolute dose. So how would I read this point here? Whatever this organ is, tamam? 20 percent of the volume, because this is volume, can you see this? This is volume. 20% of the volume is receiving at least 10 gray. Why do I say at least 10 gray? Because there is a smaller part of this volume receiving, oops, my, my hand. <laughs> yeah, there are smaller parts within this 20%. There is the 15%, 10%, and 5%. And if you the sub volumes here are getting higher doses. So the minimum dose is 10 gray. And uh, here's an example. Let's say I have this organ. Tama? And I have a, I'm going to change color. Just give me just a second. And then I have 10 gray surrounding this organ, whatever that organ is. So I can say, okay, so 10 gray is covering my organ. That's good. But what's inside the 10 gray? Okay, I could have uh, 12 gray. And maybe also inside this 10 gray, I could have, let me change color again. I could have 18 gray and so on and so forth up until the maximum point. But what do you see? I see 10 gray being the, the dose covering the entire volume. But inside, I have higher and higher and higher doses. Of course, higher doses, my lower volume, right? But so how can I say, how would I express this? This volume is getting at least 10 gray. This volume is Inside this volume, I have 11, 12, 14, 18, up to 20 gray. So this is how you read it. You say 20% of the volume is getting at least 10 gray. And if you follow the curve, I have a maximum spot of around 20 gray. So the volume is covered by 10 gray. And then you have hotter inside and, uh, you know, all the way to 20 gray. Is the concept clear? So that's why we always say getting a certain volume is getting at least ashara gray or getting at least, and let's say I want to read this one. This is about 5%. So if I go with the 5% volume, yiji hina. So I can say 5% of this volume is getting at least it looks like 19 and a half gray. Lish 19 and a half gray. Because inside this 5% volume, if you volume azgar, I have a, a, a lower volume, a minimum, like smaller volume, with still higher dose, up to 20 gray. So this, this is why we say dose, and this is how you write it. Dose covering 20% of the volume is 10 gray or more. 10 gray or more. Dose to 20% of the volume is 10 gray or more. Our dose to 20% of the volume is at least 10 gray. As long, it, it doesn't matter how you want to say it and how you want to express it, as long as you know that this is the minimum dose covering this volume. Tamam? It takes a little bit of getting used to, but that's why you always say. Uh, minimum dose covering a certain volume. ICRU recommends a certain plan reporting. Yeah, and you want, if you want to print out, if you are still doing uh, print out of the plan, uh, you have paper charts, tamam? 
ملفات ورقية for the patients, hospital charts or maybe radiation oncology chart. What are the things that you want to report? Uh, there are different levels of reporting, and if you look at ICRU document itself, it, can, it, it will take you from the minimum required all the way to the most comprehensive reporting. However, this would be kind of a, a general that we all still use, and we all, whether you are doing IMRT or you're doing stereotactic or 3D, this would be something that common between all the reporting structures. So first of all, you have to report what kind of plan geometry you're using and radiation modality. For example, four field box technique using 15 X-ray or two tangential beam using combination of 6X and 10X. So you're describing how the beam orientation is and you're describing the modality. Modality and the energy. By modality, we mean if it's my my mouse is going crazy by modality we mean energy and the type of beam is it photons or electrons and then you have to describe those and fractionation so you say 50 gray to ptv 50 and 25 fractions followed by 10 gray to ptv 60 and 5 fraction وهذه ما تعرف ب اللي هي البوست تمام or maybe you can do what we call simultaneous integrated boost, especially if you're doing IMRT. You can say 50 gray to PTV 50 and 60 gray to PTV 60 in uh, 30 fractions. For both of them will be receiving the required dose every day. So in 30 fractions, I'm delivering PTV 50 and PTV 60. فيمكن واحد يقول so what's the big deal? You know what, let's leave SIB right now for, for the, نحطه كده على جنب, تمام? So, so you have to describe how your, how, what your dose is and the fractionation scheme. And then if there are uh, some issues with PTV coverage, say 95% of PTV is receiving so much dose or, and remember, it's, uh, a volume is receiving at least this much dose, right? So you have to describe the dose that uh, is being covered, covering the PTV, if you have any hot spots, if you have any max, a maximum dose, if you have any cold spots. And the best way, by the way, if you don't want to write this, and this becomes too much for the physician to write, yeah, and it doesn't make sense to write this information, what you can do, you can print out the DVH. أسهل شيء تطبع DVH. خلاص, ما تحتاج to write anything. You just say we're doing uh, eight field, Lung treatment with six MV photons prescribing 50 gray and 25 fractions. And then you refer to the DVH printout for all the information about those PTV, GTV, or had the organs at risk. This is what other people do. So we don't have to write everything as long as you report it. report. You don't have to write it. But for sure, this is the prescription from the physician. This has to be written. And it has to be there, and it has to be explicit. But in معلومات الثانية, the other information, you can just print out isodose distribution. The minimum isodose distribution to print out is in, uh, the isodose distribution in the three major axes, coronal, sagittal, and transverse. Uh, if you have certain organ at risk that you are worried about, you can print out uh, you know, um, isodose around that organ at risk as a proof or documentation that is being you know, spared and also the DVH. Now, another thing we will talk about, and this will be, I think, lecture number 22, the monitor unit calculation. But this is purely for physicists. I will spare you, I will spare everyone the agony of going through physics calculation. But you also want to print out some details about your point because you still have to do some monitor unit calculation, whether by hand or through a program that you wrote in Excel, or if you have purchased a third-party program, so it's good to also to have in your chart a printout of the details of your prescription point. Tamam? I am almost finishing up with the ICRU lecture. This is not part of ICRU, but this is important for you to understand your planning system in general because I don't want people to be too comfortable with what they see on the screen. What you see on the screen when it comes to treatment planning, 
is highly influenced by two things, تمام? Uh, the first one, الشغلة الأولى. How well was the commissioning of your planning system? Data measured by the physicist, the modeling that's done either by the physicist or some of the planning system, you have to send the data to the vendor, they do the modeling and then they bring it back. But then as, a, as physicists, you have to verify the model is correct. So really it depends on what you input in the system and how did you verify it. And this is one of the most influences. The second one, and it is still also has a large influence, is what kind of those algorithm your planning system has. What do you use? So let's put it this way. If we're calculating those to a uniform water phantom, then all planning systems are created equal. Your planning system better really give you the dose you expect in a water phantom. Surprise, surprise, people are not water phantom, right? So now you have to use certain algorithms. And we go, before we go that, um, you could have pencil beam, you could have simple convolution algorithm, you could have uh, something called collapsed cone convolution, triple C, CCC. We could have the triple A, um, anisotropic, and then it, I cannot, <laughs> I don't even remember the, the terminology. You could have Acuros, you could have Monte Carlo. So it, how does your planning system calculate those? And depending on the uh, calculation engine, will you have good quality engine, like 3,000 cc car that you can go up and down hills and, you know, and you're fine? And I had them and I started the planning system. I find that, you know, it's so you have to know what calculation engine you are using and you have to know certain facts. planning system that you have. No TPS will give you accurate dose of the skin. Skin is a build up region. And with the exception of Monte Carlo, and hot Monte Carlo Kida on the side, with the exception of Monte Carlo, all planning systems will not give accurate dose to the skin. Oh, how you deal like isodose line? It's gonna show you some isodose line, it's gonna show you uh, dose coverage, but this should be taken uh, with a grain of salt. And it's a good how you don't believe what it says. What if you really want to deliver dose to the skin? Well, in this case, you use a bolus. Sahih? That's why we have bolus. We put a bolus to, yani, we want to make, yani, we want to fool the planning system. And so the planning system assumes that the skin starts from here, from above. And then, so the build-up region is far away from my uh, region of interest. If the eye is out, it does on the skin, I put bolus. Tamam? Or, طبعا, you can use electrons as well. But always take the dose to the skin with a grain of salt. What is true for skin is also true at the interface region. So and the lung bone, and the lung air, and the lung tissue, tissue bone, tissue air. Uh, for physicists, if you know in the, the physicists in the group, whether I'm talking about skin area or I'm talking about the interface area, this is where charge particle equilibrium does not exist. May confi and it one basial charge particle equilibrium. If I do not have that, planning system will not give me accurate dose because there is an assumption that CPE exists. And that's why if you remember on Thursday we said we should not prescribe or normalize uh, to a point that is sitting at an interface. Because the dose there is not accurate. So how can you prescribe dose there? Yani, yani it, it's uh, a lot of uncertainties. Now, when it comes to dose to tissue, <clears throat> especially lung, well, most importantly lung, I know this is a very large organ. What you see in the planning system, and I think last, last Sunday, the lecture gave a very nice, if you go back to, to last Sunday's lecture, there was a very nice figure that showed the, the PDD from different algorithms. Some algorithms will completely give you a wrong dose inside the lung. 
and those would be basically pencil beam. If you have pencil beam, I would highly recommend not to use it. It is okay if you're doing areas where tissues are comparable, like inside the brain and the pelvis, extremities. But if you're treating the lung, it is better not to use pencil beam. Different algorithms that we call model-based algorithms um, are much, much better than pencil beam. And then they go in terms of accuracy, they follow this line. And Monte Carlo being, you know, the most accurate we know, and it does not use, you know, it can handle the, the lack of charge particle, it can handle the lack of equilibrium in charged particles, right? So this is something for the physicist and the radiation oncologist to pay attention to, because you have to know how good of a plan you're looking at. What you see on the screen, is it really what the patient is, is receiving? So you should always have an idea of this. And for sure, if you want to prescribe those to skin, um, highly recommend using a bolus because even though you see some dose on the skin from the planning system, you should always assume it is not really accurate. Type. So where do we go from here? We talked about the quantic papers, remember the last Thursday, I have, I have them, I can send them to you. They are open source. They're published in, I think, the Red Journal, but they're, they're made open for public, so I can share them with you. Uh, quantic papers are a good way to start having baseline for the dose objectives, how much dose you want to give to each organ and what's the probability of toxicity for each organ. If you don't have it, I would highly recommend to get the ICRU 60 report. ICRU 60 is the updated report from ICRU 52. So if you have ICRU 60, you know, you're, you're, you're good. Unfortunately, I cannot give it to you. It is not open source. You have to go to the, to the ICRU website and you have to buy it. And then I would highly recommend to create teams. As I said last Thursday, so this is where we started from the first place I worked at. The mom, it was in Jordan. We did the transition to 3D in, in the early 2000s. And it really helped us to create teams. So you have a breast team, you have a head and neck team, you have a pediatric team, lymphoma team, GI, GU team. And the team is comprised of radiation oncologists, physicists, radiation therapists. As I said, if you remember, you also do need to have protocols of the setup for the patient and the, 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 the size of the CT cut. And you must on two millimeters for breast, you don't need that for a CT scan. But maybe two millimeters for head and neck is, you know, is needed. So you do have to include radiation therapists uh, people, uh, and uh, CT, uh, CT SIM technologists. So you have an entire protocol, departmental protocol, that goes from what to do for this patient from CT SIM all the way to treatment. And uh, don't forget that treatment has also imaging modality or new Linux have imaging modalities. So does it make sense to be, uh, to be imaging combi CT breast patient on daily basis? No, of course not. But maybe is it worth doing that for head and neck patient? I would ask you how good is your mobilization technique? So you do need to create teams and start working on it. It's going to take some time, but once you have those policies in place, trust me, it will become so much easier to go to the next step, which is hopefully, you know, IMRT and so on and so forth. And then other things might come in later on. You know, if you have, let's say, one year or two year practice in 3D CRT, uh, you might become more comfortable and you say, well, I want to start escalating those to certain tumors, for example, a prostate, the mom, for example. Or maybe you want to think about SIB, simultaneous integrated boost. It, it is, I put that with a grain of, um, you know, give us an insight. Some SIB could be possible in 3D CRT, could be possible. But you know, once, uh, once you build um, experience, I would say at least you know, one to two years, you might think want to improve on your practice. And then it's also good to have some population-based studies. What we see a lot in the literature is based towards Western patients what is good maybe or the reaction or the outcome of a certain population, patient population might not be completely trans transferred to our own population. Uh, for example, I can tell you this from when I was in Jordan. We saw for breast cancer patients, we saw 
many patients in earlier age group than what is reported in the literature. So we had breast cancer patients in their 30s and 40s, and it was not uncommon uh, to see some in the 20s. So clearly what is reported in, in literature might be different from your own population. So then our breast cancer awareness program, then what would you recommend for mammography, baseline mammography or clinical you know, examination? So then once you have 3D CRT, there's so many things that you can do. You can improve on your practice and you can do population-based study. So really it's exciting to start this part of, of planning. So this is the kind of, going from 2D to 3D is really a huge leap. It's a major leap. But inshallah, once you do this successfully, going to the other, like the next ones, IMRT or VMAT, the leap becomes much less. So please have a very solid background. And that's why I, I really want to see departmental-based protocols. Something we talked about last week, what if I have an old Linux, right? Well, if I have an old Linux and I cannot really have, you know, that one millimeter accuracy and the uh, mechanical tolerance, I can, I only have like three, the, the best I can do is three millimeter accuracy. Then your protocols in, in your department would say, okay, instead of having five millimeter expansion to PTV, I will make it eight millimeter expansion PTV just to account for this you know, for the old and aging Linux I have. And then once you buy a new Linux and or you have, and you have better immobilization, then you can go, okay, now we want to shrink the PTV to make it five millimeter instead of the eight millimeter we have, or maybe make it a little bit four millimeter. Remember, PTV is a physical concept. It depends on how your tumor is moving inside and what is your accuracy and setup. This includes not only the therapist putting the patient on the table, but also how the accuracy on your mechanical setup, gantry, collimator, jaws, and table. Oops. And I finished session five. I'm going to go into, oh, it's already one hour. Sorry. Um, uh, can, we, can we go back uh, just a second and uh, answer one question? Sure. Can you... Uh, clarify what is meant when we say that skin is a buildup region, and does this have to do with photon backscatter? Okay, so this is physical con physics concept. If you go back and read the, the physics of interaction of photons, you know that high energy photons, tamam? I'm going to try to draw something here, hold on. Let's look at the PDD. Okay, so this is a percentage dose, a PDD, percentage dose. Oops. And this is depth in water, right? So if I have photons coming from this side, in the beginning, I have you know, low dose in the skin, and then slowly the dose builds up to maximum, and then it starts decreasing slowly. This is what we call the buildup region. And in the buildup region, we do not have charged particle equilibrium. We are missing certain equilibrium phi. And in this region where equilibrium does not exist, planning systems do a horrible job calculating those. Backscatter has nothing to do with it because in mega voltage photon beams, I have very minimal backscatter. I have, I have the same issue here as I have when I go from lung to tissue or tissue to lung, going from bone to lung or lung to bone, going from bone to tissue or tissue to bone. Every time I have an interface, I have lack of electronic equilibrium. And skin is actually an interface. Skin is an interface between air and water. This is, this is really, if you want, I can go more into physics concept, but because we have non-physicists in the audience, maybe you can ask RCC administration, you know, you can send them an email and say, if you want to have a lecture just for physicists only to discuss all the physics concepts you go through, like the different algorithms, the lack of equilibrium and whatnot. I really don't want to take too much time talking about physics per se, out of respect of the radiation oncologist. That sounds good. So if, if, that's something that everyone feels would be valuable or that the physicists feel would be valuable. 
you can contact either myself or Ben or your clinic liaison, and we can certainly figure out a way to add in a physics only lecture if that's something that everyone would like. Okay, I'm going. So, lecture six and lecture seven are in techniques of 3D planning. And uh, you're lucky, or maybe not lucky, that you also have me as the lecturer. <laughs> I only need half an hour of your time. <laughs> I have one question about the DVH before you go in for the, the yes, next please. lecture. Go ahead. What's your question yes. about DVH? Uh, in the previous slide, you mentioned that the plan uh, that. Uh, the first plan, yeah, the previous uh, from that. This one? Yes. Okay. Yes. Here, you go for the minimum dose. I can hear you, yes. Okay. What's that question? Yes. So, I, my question is why I'm choosing the, the plan one, not the plan two. Yeah. Meaning what? That uh, every organ has the same, yeah, is the mean dose equal, and uh, no dose, no high dose uh, or uh, hotspot in the in the normal tissue and not the cold spot in the... But mean dose is not equal, my friend. Yes. This plan yeah. has mean dose of 52 gray. Remember, what's my prescription? My prescription is 50 gray, right? Yes. So in, 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 in a perfect world, I should have 50 gray covering the entire PTV. No less, no more. Unfortunately, so, I, so unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world. So I will have some minimum dose and I will have some maximum dose. So yes. if I have minimum and maximum, I should have mean. Okay. Good. So we agree. Let's not, let, let's not look at, at this because I am, you know, for the purpose of discussion, I made the maximum dose to be the same. And now I, I have plan one having mean dose 52 gray which is higher than what I want. I want 50. So I'm going to 50 gray. Plan one to be 52 gray. But what do you think? Is this weird that minimum dose is 35 gray? Yes. It's weird, right? Yeah. So if I have minimum dose 35 gray and mean dose is 52, it's kind of يعني, counter, counterintuitive. It's not clear. But this is remember mean dose is weighted average. يعني المين دوز هو الماكسيمم زائد المينيمم تقسيم كم فوكسل فيها هذا الدوز هو اسمها الويتد افريج فمع انه اي هاف فيري لو دوز هير ات از نوت افكتينج ذا كفريج بيكوز ذا كفريج از ريلي هاي اي انديرستاند ذات اي هاف اونلي فيو فوكسلز وذ ذس لو دوز اند موست اوف ذا بي تي في has voxels in the high dose region. That's why the average dose, the mean dose of the PTV is higher. Let's look at plan two. Plan two has mean dose of 48 gray, or minimum dose 45 gray. In time, can it all, I will choose plan two because I have minimum dose 45 gray. So this is closer to what my prescription dose is. Sahih, this is closer to what your prescription dose is. But look at this. There are so many voxels with lower dose. في في كتير عنا أماكن في ال PTV بحيث إنه ال average بتاعك 48 gray. Even though I have maximum of 55 gray, but the number of voxels with this low dose are so much more than I would say the P. So the PTV here is colder. But the PTV here is hotter. In other words, I just have few of these 35 gray, but over here I have a lot of a lot more than this. And by the way, what I mentioned here, this is important. Tamam, you still need to go over and look at the isodose line distribution. Like, in, if this was the only information I have, for some reason, for some reason, I cannot look at the isodose distribution. I would choose plan one because this is telling me that my PTV is 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 hotter. Tama? Okay. Yani, but again, please don't make any decision. Yani, you don't look at DVH and say, okay, choose plan one. No, you look at the DVH, you look at the isodose distribution, and you have to analyze 
where are those hot spots? It could be, it could be that this 35 gray is just one voxel. So you really cannot see it in the planning system. You, you know, you have the isodose distribution, you focus one on one, and you really cannot see where the 35 gray isodose distribution is because maybe it's just one, one little voxel. You still have to go to the isodose line distribution. <clears throat> but uh, we were talking about how to interpret mean dose in the presence of minimum and maximum doses. Okay. Okay, my second question about the next slide. Sure. Uh, you mentioned that is, yeah, that's the average uh, is 100, is samples covering is 100%. So if I am going for forward planning, I delineate all the targets, so, and organ at risk, so everything is 100%. So the sample coverage is mentioned by inverse planning when I let the machine calculate every 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 volume of uh, the target and the organ at risk. No, this is not what I meant by this. Um, Shuf, next lecture I will is log that, into uh, sample coverage. Uh, uh, the next lecture yes. I will log into the planning system that I have. I will make sure that I have a phantom somewhere there. We don't see any patient information. And I will show you what I mean with sampling coverage. This is the calculation grid. I cannot, maybe I cannot, uh, I have to show it to you. And next time, inshallah, I will log into my planning system for maybe just one minute and show you what I mean by calculation grid. Okay. Can we move on to the next session? Shadow, I have a message from Sarah. She said that on Thursday there were a few audience questions that didn't get answered. Yes, please. Um, what are they? Uh, Sarah, do you have those questions available? Yes. Good, good afternoon. I was I was typing them to you, but I think it is easier for me to just say them. Okay, okay great. I need to log out in a few minutes, so I'll just ask all the questions at once, briefly, and then I'll let you guys discuss them. Sure. Okay. Okay, Saif Abdul Hadi was asking about conformality index and was wondering if you can explain the concept to them. And he mentioned also D2% and D98%. The dose to 2% volume, I guess, and 98%. So can we do this next lecture? It's good to have some examples. Uh, maybe next, by next lecture, I mean next time, next day. So I can prepare. Yes. I did not talk about conformality index. That is true. But we can do that uh, next time. Yes. If you can send them to me, so whatever I defer to next time, can you send them to me by email, Sarah? Of course, of course. Mayada was asking about PRV, and she was wondering if there are any protocols to delineate uh, PTV and PRV for radiation oncologists. Like, I guess protocols to help the radiation oncologists define what PTV. I know yeah. protocols, yeah, for stereotactic, not sure about 3D planning. Dr. Sorry, sorry, can you say the question again? Sorry. Sure, sure. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I uh, saw well, PRV. Any any protocols uh, to delineate the PRV, uh, planning risk volume? Well, it's up to the discretion of the physician. There is no no. يعني مفيش مفيش absolute protocol. Some some centers do prefer uh, planning the uh, PRV, and others are not. But in case of spinal cord. And, and the dose prescription itself, if it is high dose with the, a very sensitive critical or not, there is no definitive protocol. In my center, at least, there is no definitive protocol, but we always delineate the, we lost the, the spinal the cord and uh, optic nerves. Uh, sorry? No, I, I lost you, my... Do you? Oh, we always delineate the spinal cord, the optic nerve, optic chiasm, and sometimes we, we put what we call RINC, which is the PRV, when the prescription dose is very hot. Like in nasopharyngeal carcinoma, sometimes we, we put an additional margin, which is PRV for the parotid gland, for, for instance. But my fish definitive protocol. I don't have definitive protocol for PRV. And uh, during my visits to plenty of centers, each center has its own protocol, no definitive rules. So that's what I saw. Some physicians do yeah. two millimeter expansion or three millimeter. Yeah. Some physicians leave it to the physicist. They say, you know, do the PRV. Yeah. 
فاي اي ثوت انه حيكون في شغله كلينيكال بس سو ذا سيم ثينج اتس اب تو يو سو لاست كويستشن از ات واز ابوت اون سنترا اند اند هي واز اسكينج اف يو نو هاو تو اد ا ريفرنس بوينت ان اون سنترا كوكوانينج سيستم اي هاف نو اكسبيرينس ويز اون سنترا سو اي واز هيلب فور سو اني بلاننج سيستم ريليتد كويستشنز بليز اسك يور يور فيندور It's bet, يعني اسألوا اسألوا the, the vendor themselves إذا أنت on Centra معناته إلكتا uh, let them send الخبي إيش يسموها the planning specialist um, I'd rather that any planning specific questions be taken from the vendor themselves يعني معلش uh, لأنه لأنه they know they know the planning system better than all of us and they can explain that better Okay, thank you. And then the last part was embarrassing a little bit because someone said some that you mentioned something about double APM website, and I couldn't remember <laughs> you talking about it. So I, I, I said I'll bring it up to you. Uh, I should have wrote it up probably offline. Aywa uh, APM.org. If you go to A A P M dot org, here the organization. There is a dot uh, over here. And they, there is a section called library. In the library, they have many things open for the public and it's all free of charge. So you can go to, to the library and you can either download a presentation or to smile a presentation and after every presentation, there's questions and answers. So you can, uh, you can answer and then you see how good you did. But then afterwards they give you the answers, tamam? And it's all in the library, it's all automated. You can also download certain papers. Some of it is closed. Some of it that you have to be a member of the organization to access it. But I know a lot of, many, many of the things in the library are open. So it's really good. I have a comment in the chat that the PRV uh, is not for 3D. بس, uh, it's only for IMRT and VMAT and stereo. هو الكلام ده احنا اعتقد انت قلتيه في الليكتشر اللي فاتت في الاي سي ار يو ان البي ار في ريجاردينج ذا 3 دي بلان وبعد كده احنا يعني وي دو ريكومندد بشده في الستيريو علشان زي ما انا قلت احنا بن ايفالويت البي ار في حسب البريسكريبشن دوز لو انا البريسكريبشن دوز عندي فيري هوت دوز برفكشن عاليه جدا فانا ببقى كينج جدا اكتر ان انا ابريسكرايب البي ار في على كريتيكال اورجنز ده مظبوط لكن هي 3 مو... دي مش اي ام ار تي ومش في مات انا هحترم جدا 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 السباينال كورد والبرين ستيم برين ستيم بالذات هخاف عليه جدا وهحط عليه رينج بتوصل احيانا ل 3 ملم او 4 ملم حسب التولرنس الميكانيكال والتكنيكال والسيت اب مارجن بتاعي ان انا احدده هو بي... بحطه في ال 3D عشان بس ابقى اكدت على المفهوم يعني شكرا صحيح صحيح بالاي سي ار يو كان اي ام ار تي اونلي ذي كان دو ذات اللي عايز يستخدمها فور ايفريثينج اوف كورس يو كان دو ذات بس هي المفاهيم موجوده في الاي سي ار يو 52 اند اي سي ار يو 60 وبعدين يصير في يعني اتس ريلي فليكسيبل اتس ديبارتمنت يعني اللي يعملوا مثلا في ديبارتمنت اكس مو شرط يكون نفسه اللي في ديبارتمنت واي اوكي اي نيد Can we, can we move on to, I know there are, so many, there are so many questions. I would love to answer all the questions, but. I have a question for you. I'm not hearing anything. Can anyone hear? No, I don't hear either. Aziz, um, no, I cannot hear anything. There, there's a question I can see right now on the chat. I'm only looking at the, the very near chat, so I'm sorry I did not go all the way up about X-ray contamination. When the physicist measure data for the planning system, for the electrons, it is recommended that you measure tail at least 2 cm beyond the practical range of the electrons. Some planning system require 5 cm beyond the practical range of the electrons. And that tail is your X-ray contamination. So you can actually measure it. It, is, it does not become very worrisome for low energy electrons I mean, low mega voltage energy electrons. But it could become a little bit more, you know, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't say worrisome, but, you know, have higher contribution as you go higher and higher up in the electron energy. How much is it depends on your linear accelerator because the design of the LINAC head will affect the interaction that happens. 
And so that affects on the amount of photons that are available inside the electron beam. So you have to measure it in a water phantom, take PDD of your electron beam, and then just have a long tail measurement. So you try to take 5 cm beyond practical range. Can I move on to the next lecture? I'm already one. So I, want, I will ask RCC administration to give me an extra session because I know those are interesting concepts and all these things. So I'm, I, you know, don't worry, I will be with you until I finish everything I have to finish in my lectures. So we'll probably play around with the calendar more. Um, Yes, let's, we'll, we'll definitely make sure that there is time to address all of the questions that you all have, but let's continue on with Shada's next lecture. We'll, we'll try to continue for maybe uh, 30 minutes or so. I yeah. don't want to go too far. No, uh, I agree. Because <laughs> I know people have to go home to their families. So we'll, we'll make sure that we address any questions that we didn't get to in future lectures. Yes. So this is the beginning of you know, what techniques you would use for 3D planning. And session number six is supposed to be kind of introduction to 3D planning and session number seven is advanced techniques. But you know, the, the ideas just flow from, from one to the other. So I'll put them at least from my side in one large presentation. Uh, I can break them down later on, but you know, it's so today, hopefully in half an hour, I want to address strategy number one, which is 3D planning based on the beam eye view perspective. And beam eye view perspective, you don't hear it in 2D planning. So if you're bridging the gap now from 2D to 3D, you probably don't know what a beam eye view is. And as a case, I'm going to build a plan with you a little bit step by step for a lung case. So you have a lung tumor over here. And I have cropped all patient information, just making sure. If, you see, if anyone sees patient information, please flag me immediately. But I made sure that I cropped all the, all the uh, information. So think about two things. When you start 3D planning, I want to know what the, tu what the beam is seeing. And how does it see the tumor inside the body? So this is what is called beam eye view the first the the what the beam is seeing at is as it is entering through the body also for 3d planning you want to have more than four beams it is preferred to have more than four beams how much more will it's up to you usually the wisdom says more beams means more conformality tamam and also you could have non coplanar beams kilmit non coplanar means tiny Couch is not at zero. Couch is at 90 degrees to 70 or any other angle. Yani, so those are the two concepts I'm going to talk. I mean, not two concepts. Those are the technique we're going to discuss in the next half hour. So I'm going to ask the audience, if this was a lung, you have a CT scan of the patient, and this is the tumor that you see. First of all, by the way, for lung tumors, you should always discuss motion management but this is not the focus of this session. So we're not talking about motion management. Let's say, this is the tumor I have. Think in your mind, how would you do the plan for this, uh, for this tumor? You know, give yourself, are you talking to us, Hanadi? Or if, if not, please mute your microphone. Okay. So let's, let's look at this. Let's look at it from the, oops, I can see that I forgot to animate something. So let's have gantry at zero. So gantry, gantry at zero, this is what the beam is seeing, right? Now, of course, before you start planning, the radiation oncologist should have delineated everything. Well, uh, everything that is relevant, Taban. In this case, it's going to be the ipsilateral lung, contralateral lung, I have the esophagus, I have the, the heart, the major vessels, I have the spinal cord. So anything that you want to keep an eye on. Aisha into Aizin, you have to delineate it. The computer doesn't know that this organ exists if you don't draw it for the computer. The computer is not ذكي. It's not a hundred percent ذكي. If you don't draw it for the computer, this is my lung, it will not know that this is your lung. So in order to make things readable, I've only kept the, the aortic arch, the heart, and I the spinal cord and esophagus yep 
So you can see if I have gantry zero, then, so this is what we call the beam eye view. You can see it here, BEV, beam eye view. So you can see that this beam is going through the left lung only and nothing else. So this, this is a good, you know, this is a good angle. What's wrong with it? Let's have another angle. So I have another field over here. Now this field is going through, you know what, I'm going to make it bigger. It's too, too small. This is better, sah? Okay. So now let's look at this field. This field is also going through the PTV and the lung, but it's coming close to the aortic arch. So you have an appreciation of how close is it to your aortic arch. Maybe this is something you want to keep because this is also not going into the arch. What about another angle? Let's do this. Look at this angle. You would appreciate that this angle is going through the esophagus and also it's kind of touching upon the spinal cord. The, the, the blue color is a spinal cord. So you might want to keep it or you may want to change it. But now you are looking at what the beam is seeing as it is going through the body. What kind of organs is going through the body? And let's do another angle. Okay, now look, oops, let's look at this angle now. I have a 90 degree angle that is sparing the cord, sparing the esophagus, but it's a radiating part of the aortic arch. So it becomes, so you're looking here at the beam's eye view. Okay? And I can tell you something. If you are using six, seven, or eight beams, you can afford to have one or two beams going through some of the organs at risk. Yani, okay, mumkin. It is possible. Some organs at risk, like the spinal cord, mumkin. How would I know? Well, I have to do the calculation and see what doses I have. Now, let's look at Tijahat. So we chose some of the angles based on the beam eye view. Now, how, what can I also do with the beam eye view? Let's say I really like this angle. Tamam? Yani, بعيدة جدا عن spinal cord. Spinal cord is about, let's say, واحد, اثنين, ثلاثة, أربعة, like seven centimeters away. So this is really good. Yani, مهما يتحرك patient, I'm not hitting the cord. But at the edge of the beam, I am irradiating the esophagus. Okay, well, because I have the advantage of beam eye view, I can rotate the collimator, صحيح? Now, I rotated the collimator. لاحظوا, the part that was under the uh, radiated uh, volume, now it's smaller, okay? What about I can do something extra? Can I reduce the margin on the X2? According to my machine, this is X2. So what I can do, I, instead of having a, uh, a 1 cm margin from PTV to the beam edge. From this side, I could only have half a cm margin. Tamam? So what I did, I used the beam eye view to choose the angle of the gantry, and I chose the beam, I used the beam eye view to choose the collimator angle, and I also used the beam eye view to play around with the size of the, of the collimator, X1 or X2. But time out, okay? Time out. Leash. Do not go into this. And it could enter five millimeter away from your PTV. If you cannot guarantee the mechanical tolerance of your machine, your machine has to. And if I'm five millimeter away from the PTV, your machine better satisfy. يعني هو يفضل مش يفضل هو لازم المشين to satisfy. The uh, tolerance limit, right? Now let's say your machine is really good. You can verify that the to mechanical tolerance of your of your gantry إلى آخره. What about organ motion? You don't want to be very close to the PTV if you cannot guarantee some type of motion management. So when I chose lung because lung is really the hardest to plan because so many things goes uh, in the lung. I could have chosen something simple in the pelvis or the brain. Well, حياة حلوة ولطيفة والدنيا بخير تمام. 
like in, when you have when I'm taking this decision, especially this one, you have to really think about do I have good immobilization? Can I account for motion management? How good is my machine tolerance? And as I said, by the way, if I have six, seven, or eight beams, it is okay that some of the beams are seeing your organs, some of your organs at risk. Those the more beams you have, then you could allow that some of these beams can go through some organs at risk. As long as when you do the calculation, the dose to the organ at risk is within the acceptable DVH limit. However, this is also an option to use beam eye view to play around with the collimator setting. But don't get too close to the PTV if you don't have, what you see on the machine, you see a stationary patient. So, but you have to keep in mind the patient and, uh, and the setup on the machine side. So that's what we said. Beam eye view can really help you in 3D planning because you can choose angles that you never thought about choosing. You should always respect the penumbra, meaning uh, penumbra is, again, a physics concept. It tells me from the beam edge how much distance I need to get to 100% dose. Or, or this information you get from the beam profile. And the physicists should already have measured this data for the commissioning of the planning system. And remember what you measure, physiaine, what you measure, you measure in a water phantom. So if you have a penumbra, mashallah, like three or four millimeter from your beam profile, but if you're irradiating lung, you need to increase it. So five millimeter is fine if we're talking about pelvis or brain. But if we're talking about lung tumor, you might to increase the penumbra. And as you see in this example, this is like a 1 cm uh, from PTV to a beam edge, it's about 1 cm. And if I'm, you, if I'm using higher energy instead of six, if I'm using maybe 10 MV, I might need uh, even like 1 cm or more for the penumbra. So that's why I'm making a big deal about this part here being closer, like five millimeter. If this was in the brain, it shouldn't be a problem. Five millimeter from PTV to beam edge is enough to build up to maximum dose in brain, but not in low density tissue, right? So any questions so far on the concepts that we mentioned, the use of beam eye view to choose gantry angle, collimator angle, and to play around with the field size. Okay. Let's say again that one beam, I really like this angle, and I don't want even to have this part of the esophagus and the beam eye view, so, you know, narrowing it down from this side. If you have many beams in the plan, um, this loss of penumbra over here will probably not affect your coverage. Leish, because, in, you know, from this beam eye view, this part of the PTV is very close to the edge. But for different beams, Beam one, beam two, beam three, beam six, beam seven, it could be in 100% uh, covered. So overall, it's not a big deal. Again, you would not know until you do calculation. Right now, step one is choosing the angles of the beam. In this particular case, as I said, just to make sure I don't have, okay, so I don't have patient information. As I said, all the cases I'm showing you are clinical cases, tamam? So in this particular tumor, we ended up using nine beams, all placed using beam eye view technique. And because you're doing beam eye view technique, we spared, you know, the, the contralateral lung for the most part is being spared. Uh, nothing going through the heart and nothing going through bardo time out. You can have beam going through an organ at risk if it was from the exit side. Yani el beam, let me do this. Mumkin, what I can do, I can have a beam coming from here, radiating the tumor, and then continuing to, to, towards the spinal cord. But notice now the spinal cord is at the exit. Yani spinal cord fi makhraj al Tamam fil makhraj. It's in the exit part. So yes, I can do that. But it is completely wrong. Absolutely don't do it. Please don't do it to have the other way, to have a beam radiating the cord first and then reaching the tumor. This is absolutely no. You can go through an organ at risk only if it is in the exit side. 
بعدين يمر اذا مضطر اذا مضطر يعني if you have to then يمر في other organs at risk but never never have a beam go through uh, organ at risk first if, طبعا if you can مثل ال spinal cord, esophagus, heart الى اخره Okay, so now what's now? I, uh, I chose nine beams, tamam? Uh, what do I do next? Uh, then if we're talking about 3D planning, I have to put a prescription point. And we've discussed the, you know, where to put the prescription point. It's always, always good to have it in the middle of the PTV. If, you know, you know it's always good to have it in the middle of the open beams and in the middle of the PTV. It's preferred. But uh, as we said, if you have half beam block, don't do that. <laughs> So now you do that calculation. And then you look at isodose coverage, you look at DVH, everything looks perfect, tamam, khalas, khalasna, ta'ya doctor, approve the plan, uwaqa, tamam? What if things are not looking good? What, what could go wrong? Well, we don't have enough coverage of the PTV. And for the lung cases, mumkin aul kum minal an, for the lung cases, you will have a peripheral load dose around the tumor. tumor من جهة اللنج لاحظوا هنا one part like the, the left part you know is attached to the chest wall so you have the tissue around here and the right side of the tumor it's in the lung so my expectation immediately as a physicist إنه حيكون في عندي lower coverage over here in the peripheral side and زي ما حكينا this is expected when I have tumor in the lung so what I can do well so many things so first of all find out where are your where is your dose missing? تمام? Is it missing inside the PTV? يعني نفس ال PTV من جوا it's cold. يعني in this case, what do you do? Well, you can try to move the prescription point to different locations. You know, this is a very quick basically prescription point وحركها in different locations. Or you can increase the field size بحالة that the, the dose you're missing is in the periphery في الجوانب. Increase your field size. إذا جوانب التيومر باردة this is a good indication okay I said that both Arabic and English if the periphery if the sides of the tumor is, is cold are cold this is a good indication that you need to expand or increase your field size means that you know you need to give more margin from field edge to the to the PTV another trick that you could do instead of prescribing to 100% isodose you can see, you know what, I have good coverage in the 98% isodose line. MashaAllah, 98 or the 97 isodose line, they look good and they cover most of my tumor. So then you can prescribe to 98% isodose line. Uh, what this means is that you increase the hot spot inside the tumor. I know, yani, I'm prescribing to 98% isodose line, it means I'm making everything hotter by 2%. And also you might need to use wedges depending on how the distribution looks like. The more beams you use, in this case nine beams, the use of wedges becomes less. So the, the wedge is good to absorb those from one localized area. Um, and you have, when you have so many beams, then you don't have to, most likely will not be using wedges. But again, you have to look at it. So if you use really more than four beams using the beam eye view technique, you should be able to get a nice conformal plan. And here I'm using lung, and lung has so many things around it, a lung tumor. I guess lung, for lung, the, the team, the فريق اللي تعملوا عشان يحط protocol للlung, they should also really put protocol for motion management. How, how should you handle the, manage, the, the motion of the lung tumor? There's another case I was looking at our, our, our patient database looking for like intriguing things to do. Uh, I mean, to present, not to do. And I found another interesting case here. As you can see, this looks like uh, 11 beams. You cannot see the 11 beams, but this is, I think, 11 beams, also long. And what I noticed, look at this. I have a beam here, pure lateral, right lateral. Beam tani hina. And it's really radiating the, the spinal cord. Sahih, the spinal cord is at the exit part, which is, you know, as we want it to be, it's exit. But it's really close to the, to the PTV. So look what the planner did. 
It's very clever, actually. Instead of having one large beam, tamam, radiating this, the planner divided the beam into two beams. This beam, barely abutting the spinal cord, but radiating this part of the tumor, and another beam radiating the other side of the tumor and abutting with the spinal cord. Taban, someone would say, what about the PTV in the middle? Covered by, well, remember, I have 10 other more beams uh, to cover. But for some reason, the planner decided to use you know, a true right lateral. And I have a very nice dose distribution. <laughs> but this is another technique that they could use. Again, I want to have a word of caution. You cannot be really abutting this close to your organ at risk if you cannot guarantee the setup of the patient and if you cannot guarantee the motion management, the map, it has to be really in, and you have to know your, the system you have. So what they did here, they split the beam. And this is kind of, think about it, this is kind of more or less towards IMRT thinking. Because in IMRT, you could have just one big beam, one large beam, and then you have the MLCs covering the, uh, the spinal cord, right? And there is one I did not include here, but this, be, this plan, had also non-coplanar beams. There was one beam with couch kick at 270 degrees and a beam going through like 30 degrees or something. And you can feel a couch kick. And the plan used uh, two tricks. The trick that they split the lateral beam and we had a couch kick. But I really liked, I, I really liked this concept. So, you know, the, let me just, yeah. So this, this is a concept I really liked. The, the planner split the beam so that he or she, I don't know who did the plan, he or she will not radiate the, two, the spinal cord. Another trick to reduce the dose of the cord while still you know, capturing the PTV from these sides. So as you know, when you're planning using the beam eye view, you really can do a lot of tricks. And it will take you away from the 2D mentality because now you're looking at 3D. Lastly, I want to finish now this small part of the presentation saying, if you're dealing with soft tissue, in this case, this is breast, and this would be uh, our next, next session, I'm talking about another technique called the field in field and combining, mixing two different energies. And I will use breast, I'll use this particular patient. But look at this, if I'm using the beam eye view, uh, I don't really see the breast tissue, right? It doesn't, it, it, it's not there, I can see just the bone. But what I can do, I can have a different parameters for the beam eye view that I now I can see the tissue. Depending on your planning system, through halal options, go to the options of the beam eye view, and um, uh, either the option will say mandur kilo voltage beam, which is CT scan, or you see bone, or it will say NV rendering, I see from mandur mega voltage beam, in this case, I see the normal tissue as well as the bone. Remember, with mega voltage beam, you have Compton scattering, and with Compton scattering, everyone created equal. He sees the normal tissue like he sees the bone. In other planning system, under options, uh, maybe you will see soft tissue visualization, or you see bone. Okay? It depends. So go to your beam eye view option, options, and make sure that the mandur al beam eye view huwa al mandur al anta taqdar tistakhdimu yani fi halat al breast hada al mandur ma yafidni this doesn't for me i cannot use this uh, this beam eye view option because if i did not have the ptv here i would not know where the breast is but in this case i can see all the soft tissue i can see hatta al al axilla much better over here and you can see also the tissue down here where in this side you cannot really see the soft tissue at all and with this i am finishing I suppose part one of session six. And I would like to stop, take any questions and- uh... Uh, Shadow, we had uh, one person who, want, who would like you to explain again how uh, the beam uh, is split by the planner. Sure, um, all right. So actually here, this is two different beams. This, I cannot read the numbers now, but th those were two completely different beams, but with the same angle, different field size. So actually here it is. It's a beam A5 and beam A4, right? I found it. Hold on. Let me see. I'm going to put, okay. So this is, I have beam A4, tamam. Now let me choose a different color. 
عندي حقلين two different beams beam number A4 and beam number A5 تمام so both beams have gantry angle uh, this is right lateral so it's 270 degrees on our linear and gantry angle 270 degrees تمام but the collimator setting is different this one has collimator setting I don't have the information, but I can see it's a little bit, this might be like a 10 degree collimator setting, uh, maybe. And this one is collimator zero. And you can appreciate that the X1 here is zero. So it's half beam block in this case, X1 is zero. Oh, actually less, X1 is actually minus one or minus half. And then you have X2 at, one, two, three and a half. And then the other one here, I have X2 being the, the zero or uh, not zero, X2 being the minus one. And then X1 being one, two, three, uh, one, two, th three or four. I'm trying to <laughs> read it. So two separate beams, completely separate beams, but from the same gantry angle. And every beam has its own collimator and its own field size. Now one can ask, why don't I just make, you know, one large beam and use MLCs, <coughs> excuse me, and use MLCs to spare the, uh, the spinal cord? Yes, you can do that. But remember, MLCs have leakage, صحيح? So with the leakage, you can give more dose to the cord. And also look at the cord. The cord is curved. يعني جاي في في curvature. But your MLCs can only go in one direction, tamam? But you cannot really follow the shape of the, of the spinal cord. Of course, you can still do it. And as I said, when you have so many beams, this plan had 11 beams. So um, one beam out of 11 going through the spinal cord and giving you know, a little bit of a dose, as long as the DVH of the spinal cord looks good, you're fine. But always be safe than sorry, tamam? Yani if you can do a trick to remove the spinal cord from the uh, path of the beam, please go ahead and do it. One word of caution. When you do this beam splitting, where would I put the prescription point? Tamam? Taban, this is another, yani this would be a whole thinking process. How would you prescribe now? I cannot prescribe to a single point. The unknown, any points in this part will not be seen by this part. So, so I would not recommend this particular trick when you start doing 3D planning. You know, I'll always recommend maybe for you or if you're starting 3D planning, just don't use this angle. Because if you split the beam, then you have to think about where would I put my prescription point? But again, it is something that you could do if you are, know your physics, if you have the physicist is comfortable with all the tricks they have. We're putting so much pressure on the physicist. <laughs> but the physician, radiation oncologist, they don't have an easy life. The radiation oncologist have to define the PTV really well because if they don't do their, their definition really well, so there's a lot of pressure for not pressure. There's a lot of time that has to be spent to define the PTV. And then the physicists also have to have uh, spend a lot of time being clever about how to put the planning, the beams and all these things. But this is a trick you can do. But again, keep in mind, if you do, if you split a beam, then you have to think about where is the prescription point or how would I prescribe the dose? Tamam? By the way, if you have so many options, if you go to the planning system, which of the prescription, you could prescribe to mean dose, you could uh, mean PTV, you could prescribe to, uh, you could actually prescribe monitor units. But those, to me, those would be in the really much advanced part of 3D planning, and I don't like to talk about them right now. So right now, let's do ICRU recommendation, which is prescribing to a point. So you can do so many tricks, right? You can do a lot of tricks, and we just learned many of them using beam eye view, couch kick, uh, splitting beams, Etc. Etc. Any other question? <clears throat> we have a couple of questions in the in the chat box. 
one Rashid asks, will I be, uh, will I be prescribing dose for every field? So basically, uh, if you have a prescription point for every field, wow, yes, you could do that. But, it but then how would you, you have to think about how would you present this information? If you want to prescribe a point for every beam, then please, 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 please make sure that you are looking at the plan from the absolute dose perspective. Don't, don't go to percentage isodose line. Go to absolute isodose line. And Kauthar said, can I use percentages? Yes, of course you can. But percentage of what? Right? Um, as I said, you could have, yes, you can see this in XEO system. Okay, so someone's saying, yeah, but you have to be careful. Percentage of what? And this is, let me, um, I want to take you back to the previous, quickly, very quickly. We talked about this. Whoops, excuse me. So we talked about it, right? If I'm prescribing, if I am prescribing and looking at, at percentages, what is the percentage I'm looking at? You have to know exactly what it is. In one plan, I have 90 gray. So look at this. Physician is prescribing two gray, 10 fraction for a total of 20 fraction. And my prescription is this point Rx1. But the planning system is calculating something a little bit different. You might say, oh, it's not a big deal. It's only a few gray less. Okay, what about, now I'm prescribing to Rx2. I have Rx2. But one time the planning system is calculating 21.3 gray. The other one is calculating 20 gray. This is about, by the way, this is about, I think, 5 or 6% difference. And that, what's the difference here? Here, the normalization is 100% of your field one isocenter. And this one is 100% of the point itself. So, yes, of course, you can do all the things that we talked about. You can prescribe, you can have prescription point for every field. You can prescribe to an isodose line. But when you do the plan evaluation, please, please turn on the absolute dose visualization, not the percentage visualization. Percentage could be misleading in this case. The prescription in this case will better to be, yeah, so Muhammad said the prescription in this case, meaning the case where I split the beam, is better to be for the volume. That is correct. Of course, it's better for the volume. But then, again, I'm thinking, a physicist, Lil Asaf, has to verify the monitor unit calculation of the planning system, meaning a physicist will still need a point that he or she will use to calculate MU independently and make sure that planning system is correct. So if I'm prescri prescribing to a volume or prescribing to an isodose line, um, I still need information for the MU calculation. By the way, if you think this is too much or if you're just starting your 3D planning, please don't use complicated techniques. Um, I would always use, uh, if you use the half beam. Oh, Bestoon. Never, ever, ever put any prescription point or normalization at your beam edge, whether it's half beam block or not. I, the reason is, here's my beam. Come on. I don't care where the isocenter is. Beam edge, by definition, is 50% of your dose in, uh, in the beam center. So if the dose in the beam center is 100%, of whatever value, I don't care. I'm 100% enough. Beam edge is always 50%. So whether your, your isocenter is blocked, so whether the isocenter is, is here, tamam, or the isocenter is somewhere uh, in the middle, never, never, never please prescribe or put a point or normalize to the beam edge. And, uh, and physicists, you know, when, when you do the monthly QA on the machine and you want to see radiation center versus, afwan, radiation field versus light field, what do you look at? You look at the beam edge, and then you look at 50%, صح? So 50%, describe your beam edge. So please don't put anything at the beam edge. I can have beam block. <laughs> so that's why in the ICRU, as we have seen in the ICRU, you should have, what is it? The ICRU point, that we said, always go with ICRU recommendation. 
it should be clinically relevant, meaning it should t uh, describe the dose to the PTV. So that's your open beam. That's in the middle of your open beam because all beams will be open when it comes to the PTV. Okay, with the except of the case I just showed you, just ignore that case. Control and delete, ignore that case, right? So all beams in 3D planning should be open to look at the PTV. So my, my point should be in the middle of the open area of the beam. Please stay away from the edges. Now, it doesn't matter if it's half beam blocked because again, you look at the open beam. So follow the recommendation of ICRU of where to put the PTV. Uh, sorry, for where to put, uh, where, where to put the, your, your prescription point. If the isocenter happens to be in the middle, okay, so be it, we prescribe to isocenter, but uh, yeah, yani remove the isocenter concept from, your, from 3D planning. Any other questions? When, when I split, uh, use the split uh, beam, I will split it as a volume or as a dose? No, when you split the beam, you split the collimator, صح? The collimator from the yamin, you see the yamin the tumor, and the collimator from the yasar, you see the yasar the tumor. So you split the beam, فعليا. هلا what happens إنه فقط هذا الجزء من the tumor حياخد dose from this beam. اللي هو ال. If if this is too complicated, شوف هو لأنه لأنه splitting the beam requires now إنه you cannot use a single point of prescription it requires that you maybe you need to think about how would you prescribe it's no longer valid and you ask them one prescription point so maybe don't start by splitting the beam and I would suggest draw draw a sphere in the water phantom and start doing some beam splitting and see how would isodose change how the monitor unit change when you put prescription point in different places Hayal, you have you have to understand, Kaman, how the planning system تبعك, is um, handling this scenario. And they the planning systems will handle things differently حسب the calculation موجود عندك. So please don't use it. Don't use it in the بداية. Okay, I have another question. Yeah, تفضل. When you treat case nasopharyngeal carcinoma T4 with intraclinal extension to opticism. How to delineate this case and how to treat it? You delineate it using your CT scan and you should always use maybe MRI fusion. It's recommended, I guess, to use MRI fusion so that you can better delineate the optic chiasm. And then you have to do priorities. Tamam? The gigash way. We talked about this. If I can go to here. Dr. Soha and Kunti Ma'ana the other day. Oops. Yes. Uh, so, I the mic. Uh, so if I'm, uh, I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I Field and field technique we're covering, inshallah, in the next lecture. So you can reduce the dose to the optic chiasm without really underdosing the tumor. And it's another technique we can do, field and field. And then you, as a radiation oncologist, you have to give me priority. If I have optic chiasm and PTV overlapping, you have to tell me which one I need to pay attention to. Yeah, it's a priority. Cover PTV, will uh, uh, spare organs at risk, or maybe. يعني جزء من الاثنين I can underdose PTV بس مش underdose GTV أو هقول لك forget about the optic chiasm where the patient will have to go blind it's part of the treatment because we have to cover you have to tell me this أنا ساعتها كنت أقطع فما سمعتش السؤال فهو كان سؤال إحنا بنرسم النيزو فارينكس upon إيه مش عارفة ما كملش مع السؤال هو هو كان السؤال إذا عندي هذا النك كيس Okay. كيف نعمل delineation خاصة لل ال إذا عندك optic optic chiasm. Optic chiasm affection يعني ال 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 tumor encroaching على optic chiasm. Thing the optic chiasm. Optic chiasm is affected by tumor. Okay. 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 ما إذا إذا the tumor affecting one of the critical organ 
now it's it it is it's no more critical organ it's affected by the tumor in this area i have a tumor so i have to radiate it um is a an organ at risk be بعيد عن التومر فانا بحافظ عليه لكن is a tumor affecting an organ at risk itself so i have to radiate it ما هحافظ عليه ازاي i have to radiate it and زي ما قالت دكتوره شادا انه احنا بن evaluate uh, it's a penalty which of which in this case scenario انا المفروض ان انا اعالج التومر على حساب الاوبتيك نيرف او الاوبتيك كياز في كيس ثانيه لا اتس اتس نوت ابسوليوت وي هاف تو هاف ان اكزامبل وي هاف تو هاف ا كيس تو سي الراديولوجي اوكي جو ثرو انذر راديولوجي ميثود اذر راديولوجي ميثود ويل جيف مي ذا بايولوجي اوف ذا تيومر اتس ان ذيس اريا فانا اقدر اشوف فين ال 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 افيد ارياز اللي واخده البروليفريشن اكتر ودي اوصل لها دوز اعلى ممكن اعمل حاجه ثانيه ادي دوز فيز 1 ولتكن مثلا سي 50 جراي وبعد كده اشوف الريسبونس اوف ذا تيومر ذن اي كان تريمينج اوف ذا سي تي في ليتر اف ذيس اريا از ريسبوندد بس ذيس از ا فيري لونج ستوري ديبندس اون ذا نوع تيومر نفسه الجريد الريسبونس اند اتس ا لونج ستوري اوكي اوكي اف اي يوز بيت سي تي تي تو ايفالويت ذا تيومر البيولوجيكال Point of the tumor. If the SUV was uh, 3.5, uh, it's Masoud uh, Maya. Uh, uh, I I can't I can't answer this in absolute. It has to be individualized for each case. And I'm in the discussion on a certain point. I'm not sure. 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 Uh, طيب is it possible to give the patient induction chemotherapy until the tumor uh, shrinkage from the organ at risk? Again, and, uh, I, I, I don't know what's the nature of the tumor that you are talking about. I don't know. Which type? Which type? How old is the patient? With, what, what is the uh, stage? It's, it's a long story to give you an answer for such mm. a case. I have to know all the data, then we can evaluate the best option for the treatment for it. So if you had a particular case, we can discuss through the email. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we should conclude now. I thank everyone for attending. I know this is, you know, interesting topics we're talking about. So many tricks, so many techniques. And not just from the physics point of view, also from the clinician point of view, because, you know, there's a lot of things to learn and uh, to get used to. We will meet again next time.